Hello everyone, so for today we'll see how to create or manipulate VBA macros. So the code that you're writing in Excel to automate the procedure and we will see how to manipulate that using Python. Nowadays the VBA macros are not so used anymore. I remember I started working with them in 2016 and I think it was until late 2018. And nowadays are just a few companies that are using VBA macros to Excel files. And this reason is because uh, while a macro is running, you, you can't use any other Excel files. And also it's kind of slow comparing to Python. And you are kind of limited, meaning that comparing with Python, if you want to develop some VBA macros, you will have to write everything from scratch. So you don't have any functions or any modules that you can call. You have to create your own functions for anything that you need to do in that specific automation. So let's look at the first example. Everything that you will see in this video, you will be able to find in a Git repository that I will mention in the description as always. So the first example is how to create a VBA macro using a Python file. So we'll just create a simple uh, macro that when it will be triggered, it will just show a message box with the message VBA macro called. So we are just opening the Excel application and adding a workbook and an active chat and then adding a VBA project to it. So this will be the VBA code that will be inside the macro. So we are running this code. I will see that the Excel opened, and if we go and press Alt F11, you will see the VBA macro created in the modules. And if you want to run it, you have to go to View Macros, to Macro, and run it. And you can see the pop up message. Okay, so this was the first example. Let's clean up the terminal. The second example is how to create a VBA macro and then how to trigger it. And if you will compare with the first example, we are just creating it here. And adding just this line, it will trigger the macro. And in this case, we will have the module name, the macro, and the function inside the macro, which is test macro. And we are calling function from a specific module which will just show a message box with this thing, one, two, three, running again. And we can see that the Excel is popped. And as you can see, the macro was already triggered. If we go again with Alt F11, we'll see the macro. And also, if we go to View Macro, View Macro, we can see it here and run it again, and it will be the same case. Okay. But what if we have a macro in a file already and we want to use that macro to add it to a new file or to a new workbook on which maybe we are scraping some data. So in this example, we will use a file that we already have called cell summary and it's XLSM, meaning that it has a macro inside, it's macro enabled, because usually the extension of the Excel file will be XLSX. So we will read the file and the VBA file name and just copy it and save it as VBA project.bin because this is the specific file that contains the macro of the Excel file. If we want to see that specific macro, we can go here, Alt F11, and you can see that it will pop up a message box, please make a backup of the work, work daily. If the active range A1, so the first cell, the A1 cell, it's empty. So if it's empty, it will pop up this message. And it won't let us uh, close the file until we make something, add something in that specific cell. Also here in the first workbook, we have the same thing. If you want to close it, and the first cell is empty, it will tell you that it cannot be blank. And if it's not blank, the application will do. So for example, we are deleting the first cell. 
we are trying to close, it will still tell us that the first cell cannot be back. We are uh, putting the string back and we try to close, we can. So this is the whole thing that the macro does. So while running the script, and as I mentioned, the script will be available on my GitHub page. So you don't need to, to follow and copy line by line. So running it, open the debugger and the VB projected bit was extracted. And if we pull back, we can see a specific one. So this is the macro, we have the macro inside and we don't need to copy anything. And if you want to export the macro from a file and import it into another file. And I will show you how to import it in another file in the last script. So firstly, we are reading an Excel file directly from GitHub. I'm not sure if you know that, but this is actually something that you can do. You can view here a uh, specific file, and if you click on view row, you will see the file. So it's just a file having some data. Because I don't want to generate any gibberish one. Okay. So we are accessing this GitHub and reading the Excel from there. Then we are uh, putting by name the external price sum. And then we are resetting the index. And we want to write everything to a new Excel file, which is called writing using the engine XLSX writer. Then we want to put everything to an Excel, uh, which is, as I said before, Excel summary. So basically, we are, let's say, downloading the Excel from GitHub and creating a local clone. And then, again, the workbook, we will want to add the macro inside that file. So basically, we will rename the file as xlsm so we will save it with the extension that has macro enabled and we will add the VBA project that we have saved before uh, please be aware that nowadays the save function isn't available anymore uh, for the excel writer so if you try to use save it will just throw an error but using close will do the same thing so if we go back we already have this one, so we can close it because I ran it before. So we don't have any Excel file now, but after running it, we will access this one from GitHub, read the cell summary, cell file, and adding the VB project to it. So now we have the first one that we created here. And sorry, here that takes to Excel. And this is all the data that we need. And now if we open the one with macro enabled, we will see the data that was filtered and if we go to the macro section you will also see the macro added as respectively that it was the first file so in the module or in this workbook so again if we want to delete it first cell in the new generated macro file let's close it it will throw the button because we have a different name on the sheet so you have to be aware that you need the same sheet name as defined in the macro so now if we want to close it it will pop up the message now if you add here again name you will be able to close it because you'll bypass the macro function i hope this was useful and who knows maybe your company is still using PBA macros and this will come in hand one day. Please check the description for the git repository and please subscribe for more content like this. Cheers!